So welcome to part two of this video. If you haven't already watched part one, uh, it's my previous video. I'll link it down below if you haven't seen it. I would recommend maybe going to watch it to find out a little bit more about what is ayahuasca and why I decided to partake in four ayahuasca ceremonies. It'll make a bit more sense to you watching that video before this one. But if you've just come to watch this video, then welcome. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are in this big wide world in which we live in. Before I get into the video, I just wanted to say quickly that no ayahuasca experience is the same. So if you you've experienced ayahuasca, your experience will probably be very different to mine. If you haven't experienced ayahuasca and you are thinking of doing it, your experience is probably going to be very different to mine. And also no two ceremonies are the same. So you might have a really difficult night one night and the next night you might go to heaven and have the best night of your life. You never know. I just wanted to say that before I get into this ceremony, before I get into this ceremony, uh, before I get into this video because a lot of you who may have experienced plant medicine before might be like, well, it wasn't like this for me, like blah, blah, blah. That's totally to be expected. Everyone's experience is very, very different. And I can only speak on behalf of myself and my own experience with the medicine. I ask you as well to watch this video with an open mind and an open heart and non-judgmentally because I know this can sound crazy to some people and that's totally okay because it is a very different, unusual experience that is not for everyone and it's not something that everyone will want to do or feel called to do and that's totally fine. Uh, for me, I felt really called to work with ayahuasca and to partake in these ceremonies and I followed that intuition and that soul calling and it led me to sit here today and film this video so please watch this video with an open heart open mind and non-judgmentally and without further ado let's get into it also I charged my camera before I filmed this video and because I've just filmed the first part of this video it's now flashing battery so I'm gonna film as much as I can but I may have to take a little break and keep filming because I'm pretty sure my camera's gonna die at some stage in this video because I have a lot to get through and it's all written down in this very little diary. Ayahuasca okay my experience if you guys watched the last video you'll know that I decided to go to Rhythmia Life Advancement Center in Costa Rica I decided to go there because it is the only medically licensed plant medicine place in the world they have a paramedic on site which I saw a couple of times during ceremony not for anything crazy someone tripped over and hurt their foot so he came with an ice pack like that was about the extent of his work but um, there is one in case you need it so my personal experience with Rhythmia I, I felt really safe the whole time I was there which is something that's super important when partaking in these sort of ceremonies especially if you've never done it before it is a really scary and daunting experience leading up to ayahuasca I felt um, apprehension kick in doubt kick in I wasn't sure whether I was doing the right thing and that is totally normal that is your ego basically doing its job to try to protect you. Our ego is definitely something that serves us living in this world and living in the 21st century and, you know, being a human. But it is something that can get in the way of a lot of things in your life and I was very aware that that was my ego talking and that my soul wanted me to experience ayahuasca and wanted me to follow this journey. So that's what I listened to. I'm going to briefly talk about the experience before ceremony and what happens before ceremony. Uh, basically, I stayed at a hotel near the airport. The night before, I went to Rhythmia and you can organize a shuttle, the Rhythmia shuttle, to pick you up from the hotel the next morning. When you get on the shuttle, they give you like a little welcome pack, which has some snacks, which has a form to sign and information, just so you know what you're getting into and a little bit of information about the retreat and ayahuasca and all that sort of stuff immediately felt safe which was very important to me because it's not an experience you want to go in feeling unsafe so that was really nice it took about an hour hour and a half to get to the resort once i got in there i checked in and then you go straight to do a medical intake which is something that not all ayahuasca retreats offer and if you can go somewhere that has a medical intake, that would be ideal because there are certain people who can't work with ayahuasca. If you have a chronic heart condition, if you have schizophrenia or bipolar, it is not recommended that you do ayahuasca. You meet with the doctor and he does your blood pressure, your heart rate, and then asks you a bunch of questions about like your history and your physical and mental health and all that sort of stuff, just so you can get medically cleared to participate in ceremony. And yes, there were people that didn't get medically cleared and couldn't participate in ceremony. They did get to participate in everything else. The one lady I met that didn't get to do ceremony because she had a heart condition, she still said that she had a miraculous week and she got her miracle. Rhythmia's motto is receive your miracle. It sounds like a crazy big statement, but the success rate of people who actually get like a life-changing miracle in their one week stay there is 95.06%, I think. So 956 people out of every thousand people get a life-changing miracle in their week at Rhythmia, which is a crazy high percentage. See me as if you go to like a mental hospital or a rehab for addiction, I think the success rate is like 13%. So a very, very big difference. And Rhythmia do pride themselves in these statistics. They collect a lot of data. They do a lot of follow-up surveys six months later. It's very data-driven, so they can keep track of 
how many people are getting these life-changing miracles. Hello, my camera died and uh, I charged it, ate some spaghetti, and now I'm back. I am not affiliated with Rhythmia at all. I'm not getting paid to make this video. Everything I talk about is my complete, honest, and open opinion. I can only talk from my experience and that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm not getting paid for it. Rhythmy, I have no idea I'm making this video. So without further ado, let's get onto my experience. The night before ceremony, I didn't sleep the best. I was really, really nervous, but also my roommate snored really loud. And that is something that is not a tr I wouldn't go as far as saying a trigger for me, but I remember in the hospital in one of the groups, we had to say like, what was one thing that annoyed us or that frustrated us? And I said snoring. <laughs> um, I feel like it just, it frustrates me. It brings up a lot of anger and frustration. You might think it's really random the fact that I'm talking about snoring in this video, but you will see as the video goes on that it's weirdly relevant to my ayahuasca journey, which is totally unexpected. I did not think that snoring was something that was going to come up or be of any relevance to my spiritual journey, but it is something that I feel like came up throughout the week. So my roommate snored and that was really frustrating because it was the Sunday night and we had ceremony Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday night. So I knew that this was like the last night that I was going to be able to get a decent amount of sleep because the other nights you're in ceremony and then Thursday nights an all night ceremony so you don't sleep. I was quite frustrated because that was like my one chance to get sleep and I didn't really get much but that's okay. Everything happens for a reason. At Rhythmia they want you to be tired. They want you to feel a bit exhausted because then your ego is less likely to fight against the experience and you're more easily able to surrender to the experience when you're tired or frustrated and you just don't have the energy to like put up a fight. So that was Sunday night. Then Monday we had some classes. Like every single day they had different classes. It was a really good way to integrate and process everything that was happening in the ceremonies and I think it's a really important part of doing ayahuasca is 50% of work happens in the ceremony but 50% of work happens when you get home you know you have to integrate what you've learned you have to kind of settle back into your normal life but with a different set of eyes in a way and then it came to Monday night which was the first ceremony and I'm not gonna lie I was ridiculously nervous and I think pretty much everyone was as well. Having not done ayahuasca before, I really did not know what to expect. I'd done my research, but I feel like nothing can really prepare you for a ceremony in that sense. And because everyone's experiences are different, you don't know what your ceremony is gonna be like. A lot of people said that they were really scared of the purging aspect. So basically when you're in an ayahuasca ceremony, you can purge. And purging has many, many forms. The ones that are most commonly talked about and feared are vomiting and shitting yourself, pretty much. The shitting yourself doesn't happen very often. Only like a couple of people will have that experience. But in these traditions, they see purging as a form of a release. So it could be like an emotional purge. You could be purging up past traumas, um, addictions, emotional stuff. But it's also a physical purge in a sense that you're basically purging out all the toxins that are stored in your body. Uh, you can also purge in other ways that are not as uh, violent, um, such as yawning shaking, sweating, crying. By no means does it mean that you're going to vomit or shit yourself in an ayahuasca ceremony. There are a lot of people that don't do any of the above and that might just purge in other ways and everything that happens is right for you. So if you're meant to vomit and you're you're getting sick then that's stuff that needs to come out and in those sort of cultures they see it as getting well whereas in our western cultures when someone throws up we see it as getting sick which I think is really interesting and I prefer how they see it because it makes a lot of sense like you're getting stuff out of your body you're getting well you're you're cleansing your body of things that don't need to be there anymore and I think our culture has it all backwards in a way for me I wasn't as scared about the purging part I was more scared of the psychological stuff and the stuff that I was gonna see and I know that I have had past experiences that have been really difficult and I was really scared of the psychological aspect and what was gonna come up so that was my main fear a lot of people were like I would never do ayahuasca because I don't want to vomit really that is that is the le least of your fears everyone that threw up was like even though at the time it's a very uncomfortable experience they felt so much better afterwards. They felt lighter. They released so much stuff that was dragging them down. It came to the first ceremony. Uh, we wore all white clothing because it's seen as a uh, purer energy. And so you want to dress in light colored clothing um, just to give your respect to the medicine. And so I had my, my white clothes and I was ready to go. And we lined up out the front of the maloka, which is basically a ceremonial space. They call it a maloka. So we got into the first ceremony. And basically what they do is you find your mattress. You find a mattress in the room. You you get like a proper mattress, a blanket, a pillow, a bucket, 
if you need it, and a roll of toilet paper. And when you enter the room, they like you to follow the noble silence, so don't talk to anyone, just keep to yourself, meditate, get into that headspace, and prepare yourself for ceremony. And before we drank the ayahuasca, they offered rape, which is a ground powdered tobacco. And this is completely optional, I was a bit scared of doing it, but I decided I'm here, I paid a lot of money to be here, apparently it's super grounding and it helps relax you before you take the ayahuasca, I was nervous, so I was like, why not? I'm just going to immerse myself in everything this place has to offer. So before we did the rape, the shamans for the night uh, basically called everyone to the front and they sat down and they explained a little bit about the medicine we were drinking that night because every night at Rhythmia is a slightly different medicine with different shamans and he explained a bit about the medicine. It was from uh, the Santa Dime Brazilian tradition and we had a little chat which kind of put my mind at ease. He gave it an opportunity for anyone to ask questions. This happened through every night of ceremony with the different shaman. They would always call you to the front and they would tell you about the tradition, about the medicine, what to expect and all that sort of stuff. So I'm not going to go into that for each night but that happened every single night before the ceremony began. Then we went back to our mattresses and they called for rape. So we all lined up and they basically administer this tobacco through your nose. They had like a little like a pipe thing. I'm just going to use this symbol like shaka bra to represent what it does and they put one little tube of the bamboo pipe in one nostril and then they put this stuff on it and they blow it up your nostril, up one nostril and then up the other. I didn't really know what to expect. I knew it wouldn't be like a comfortable experience but I knew that it was super beneficial and healing before an ayahuasca ceremony and very grounding. Not gonna lie, it burnt really really badly. Picture like the worst like burning in your nose and times that by 10. Like it was intense but very short lasting. So they did, they blew it up your nose and then like your eyes water and you just feel like some people sneezed. It was, it was painful, um, not gonna lie. But on the other hand, it was super grounding and I did it every single night and I was really glad that I did. I actually bought some rape yesterday to work with at home. Even though it's a painful experience when you inhale it, um, it is super grounding. It opens your third eye and it just relaxes you and gets you in like a very calm meditative state. We did that, went back to our mattresses and kind of chilled for a little bit before they called for the first cup of ayahuasca. Then about half an hour later, they called for the first cup and we all went up and lined up and waited to receive our cup of medicine. And that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and enjoyed finding out a little bit about my pre-ayahuasca experience, what to expect going into a ceremony and all that fun stuff. In the next video, I'm gonna be starting to get into the juicy goss and the juicy details of my first ceremony and then after that I'll have a new video for each ceremony so stay tuned watch this space as I mentioned before I'm dividing this video this long video into like five parts because each ceremony kind of deserves its own video you won't have to wait too long in between videos I'm gonna upload probably one of these every second day this is gonna be like a 10 day series so I hope you guys are enjoying it so far I know it's been a bit drawn out into getting to my actual experience but I felt like there was a lot to talk about beforehand so I hope you guys have enjoyed that and are all ready to hear about my first ayahuasca experience in my next video. On that note, I'm gonna go, but I hope you're all having a wonderful day wherever you are in this big wide world. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and ring that bell so you can be notified when I upload new videos, especially during this time of isolation. Maybe you guys are watching more YouTube than you usually do, I certainly am. <laughs> and if you wanna keep up to date with my regular life on my Instagram, it is at amygrace with three E's, I'll have it somewhere here. Uh, I definitely post a lot more on there than I do on this channel. And on that note, I'm gonna go. Don't forget to be kind to each other and be kind to yourselves, especially during this intense time we're all going through and I will see you very soon in my next video or in the next part of this video. Bye!